course, made by an Irish band anywhere, ever. I find that that song, Mary, is just really sentimental mm. for me. I love it. Oh, there's loads of other decent songs on it. It's a great song. That Washington Down would be one of my favourite songs. But anyway, we'll get to that. Speaking of music, a 21-year-old, uh, Owen Quigg, was just 16 when he appeared in or on the fifth series of X Factor. He was mentored by Simon Cowell and was tipped for stardom after coming third in that competition. Owen is now one of the five acts vying to become Ireland's entry in the Eurovision Song Contest in May. His song of choice is the movie song, which is written by Carl Broderick, the songwriter behind Ireland's 2005 entry, Love. And here is an exclusive preview of Owen performing the movie song. <laughs> Sail the world and the seven seas to get inside the candy shop and lose the key. I want to know I'm real and the feelings that I feel. All I add up to something that's the deal. I want to lay on a car and get up with the stars like they do in the there we go. There's a sneak peek behind the scenes. And that was the first time you saw that yourself. It was actually the first time I've seen that. And you, I was just saying to you, did you find it difficult to look at yourself? And you were like, yeah. Yeah, I find it really hard to listen to myself back. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but yeah, I, I don't like watching myself on TV at all. I'm not even going to watch this after it comes out. Now, we did say earlier on that you were only a wee lad. You're only 21 now. You were 16 yeah. when you were in The X Factor. And that was the year that JLS and Alexander Burke were in it, it like was. a big year. Yeah, it was a massive year, massive year. So what's happened to you since then? That's what people want to know. Yeah, well, basically after the show, um, we toured for a good two years up and down the country. Um, we made an album which went to number one in Ireland. Uh, I toured with Boys On as a special guest. And on X Factor, and it got to the stage where um, I knew that I wanted to go back to school. Well, my mum wanted me to go back to school. <laughs> because I did come out to do the X Factor. Um, so I went back and got my exams, and then once I got everything, I knew that school wasn't for me and that I wanted to get back doing singing again. So, um, you know, it was just about finding the right door to get back into it again. And uh, when I got approached about, you know, being a hopeful for Ireland in the Eurovision, I kind of jumped at the chance. It's a great platform, and I'm glad that, you know, I'm here and that I'm going to be competing in the Eurovision. So the deal that was done with Mammy and Daddy was you go back to school, finish your exams, then you can do what you want. Yeah, basically. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Good Mammy and Daddy. Can we, can we go back to before the X Factor? Yeah. Um, I mean, you're what, 14, 15 year old boy. Uh, Derry, you know, great musical tradition, great rock and roll tradition. What, yeah. what sort of music were you buying and listening to then? Um, I think um, pop music, I think, was really big then um, for me personally. Um, I do like a bit of rock. Like my, I wouldn't, if you ask me what my favourite genre of music was, I wouldn't really have one. I would like some rock, some classical. My Ooh, range is massive. Singers? Well, I'm a big fan of the script, you know, good Irish band. And Bruno Mars is my favourite solo male solo artist he's amazing he's Morris. great yeah. and uh, the new band Codaline from here as well I'm a really big fan of them so well, that's more kind of left of centre I mean it, 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 that's I don't know what you call that pop it's, it's no yeah I know it's a bit of rock I mean everybody loves a bit of Justin Timberlake well, Bruno uh, is Chris pop, Brown he? he's well, very good pop Bruno yeah. Mars is a genius he is a genius he's he's a do whatever genius. he wants <laughs> so I'm just wondering where, where were your tastes uh, molded a little bit uh, for X Factor? Because X Factor is very mainstream. It's, yeah. You know, it's family, you know, big Saturday night entertainment. Were you actually doing material that would not necessarily have been your 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 own team. personal choice? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, well, the the format of the show is that you've got. Um Different things to do each week, Rock Week, ABBA Week, uh, number ones in the UK, Elton John songs. So, well, Britney, we done a Britney Spears week, which I was completely out of my comfort zone. It was the worst week. I didn't know what, what did, I was going to sing. Which track did you sing? Uh, it was sometimes, and I didn't even know it. Like, so I'm the worst Britney Spears fan ever. <laughs> but um, yeah, that you have to sort of with that show, you have to really be able to sing everything. Looking back on that now, do you think you were glad you were 16 when you did it, or do you think, geez, it was a lot to take on? That's a lot of stuff for a 16-year-old to deal with. Yeah, and I look back on it. I mean, I wouldn't change anything because it was such a success. It was brilliant. Um, the only issue I would have was if I would would have done it now at the age of, you know, 21. Would you prefer to do it now? Probably, yeah. You know. So would you say to other people out there, just bide your time a little bit? Yeah, I mean, enjoy your teenage life and there's you've got so many years ahead of you. But um, as I say, like, it was so good for me and, you know, coming third out of so many people, I wouldn't change it. So just... Uh, 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 I mean, it's a great experience. It's wonderful. You obviously had a ball. You were living the dream, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, even if it wasn't necessarily maybe your ideal musical choice. But when somebody like Simon Cole turns around and says, 
you have it. I don't know what it yeah. is, but you have it. At, at 16, that's a huge thing mm, yes, to have said it. about you in front of 14 million people. And how do you stop your... Now, obviously, you have very sensible parents. But how does that not go to your head and how does it not mess with your head? I think it was just because I was 16 and I was so young and I was just caught up in the whole singing live on TV, um, I didn't really have time to think about it. Yeah. Um, it was just next week, next week, next week. Yeah, but now that I look back on it and think of those comments, you know, that's pretty good comments for a 16-year-old kid. It's like, a lovely thing to have crazy. Said, it's also a dangerous thing to say. Well, it can yeah. make He's a still got his parents, well, yeah, his parents have kept his feet on the ground, he's ground. <laughs> right. Talk to us about your vision, yeah. Yeah, um, well, basically, I got the call in November um, from a good friend of mine who is actually my mentor uh, for the show. Um, and he says, look, I'd love you to do this, um, be a great opportunity for you. And I was, you know, get the chance to work with him as well. Um, I jumped at the chance. So he says that he would uh, get a song. And once he got the song, the movie song written by Carl, um, I loved it. And I couldn't wait to record it. So we recorded a demo and then we went to London to record it properly. And, you know, were you worried you were like Miss Eurovision doesn't have the coolest of names, doesn't have huge street yeah, cred? Yeah, it's got sort of got that background. Were, but you, were you worried it was going to be like you're a trashy, or did you have faith mm, that you could find the right song no, for you? I think that well, with Mark, he wants to find the right song. I think we don't have your usual Eurovision song. I think we have got something really good. I was and about really to say because when I heard this song, I heard it yesterday when you're on with Pat Kenny. I thought that doesn't sound like a Eurovision song. No. It sounds fantastic. Yeah, so hopefully people like it and get behind it. Um, so now it's um, it's basically all about like you know trying to get people to listen to it mm. and enjoy it. Um, but I think you'll have a hit with this anyway. It's I, a beautiful song. I hope so. Like it's out on iTunes now. You can actually pre-order it and it comes out on the twenty-first. By the way, is this Mark Murphy the, who used to be the guitar player with the Devils? Is this Mike Murphy's son? No, 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 no. Ah, all right, no. okay. I was just wondering. Um, no, it's. Um, it comes out on the 21st, the week before the Eurosong and iTunes. You can actually pre-order it now. And um, I'm really excited about it because I think, you know, as well as it being in a chance to be in Eurovision, it could do well, you know, as a single and which is cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful um, song. So is this the, is this the relaunch? Of um, oh, like the reboot of Owen Quinn at the age of 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, obviously, that would be uh, an added bonus, but I guess for right now, I'm kind of concentrating 100% on the Euro song. You know, I don't want to be thinking too much ahead of myself. You know, um, if I get the chance to represent Ireland on the international stage, that's it's crazy. So, it's people the dream who followed you in the X Factor and voted for you, you'd be saying to them, Bring your support to me again, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you're begging, but it'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. it would be nice. Um, yeah, no, I've got a lot of support through Twitter and stuff and uh, Facebook, and it's it's been it's been quite nice, you know, being away for so long. And people are saying, "Oh, I thought you'd vanished off the face of the earth and stuff." So it's it's kind of nice that people still remember you from you know five years ago. Well, well, listen, it's we it's called the movie song. It, indeed. And, and by the way, we have to say, uh, just in case people think we're avoiding the issue, uh, uh, we're being quietly negative. Carl Broderick is obviously Alan's other half. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> and and has, uh, has formed where Eurovision is concerned. Yeah. So uh, we wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. And when, you, when you win, remember? <laughs> Back here. Yeah, well, Don't be forgetting us. And bring you guitar next time. I will. Cheers all. God bless. Now